На свидание. Good evening, good evening, good evening. See, y'all didn't know I spoke Russian, right? <laughs> I think that's it. That's all I got. There's nothing else. Uh, what do you got? Do you have any water left? Huh? Guys, give me one second. I just want to give her some water real quick. Hold on. We had some in there. I didn't know. I couldn't tell. It looked like it was empty. I'm back. I, I, it looked like it was empty, okay? And so I wanted to make sure she had water if she wants to get a drink while we're doing a live stream. So anyway, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope your week is going well. It's already Wednesday. I have to tell you, I was very disappointed last night. Uh, somebody in New Jersey is very happy today. <laughs> I did not win the one point, what, 1.13 billion. But there's always hope for tonight. There's always hope for tonight. We got, what, $865 million tonight. So um, as a consolation prize, I will definitely take that. I will not say no. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see. We got Dale from Ohio's here. Jan, Jan from Tennessee. Uh, Sandwich is here. R squared. Emily's in the house. Denise is here. Mr. J.C. Dale from Ohio, Mary Taylor's in the house. We got Steve is here, Nostra Dumbass, R Squared, ADK Man is in the house. How you doing, brother? So nice to see everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome. So before we jump into anything, I would just like to remind everybody that this is a very family-friendly oriented channel. I would ask you all to please be decent in the chat. Uh, no racism, no nastiness. If you cannot abide by those very simple, easy rules, those awesome people lit up in blue with the blue wrenches are going to boot you out of here because we are not going to tolerate that. So there we are. So that's uh, how's the chat tonight and how are you? So far, so good. I'm doing well also. Thank you for asking. Uh, not, not a bad day here today. Uh, I uh, yesterday, I had to run uh, the generator all day. And then yesterday was really overcast most of the day. So I uh, was not able to, I would, it wasn't bringing enough juice. And so I uh, ended up having to, uh, I ran a generator for like three hours yesterday. And that's the first time, well, thank you. Thank you. You're a good girl. Um, that's the first time in about 11, 12 days that I haven't had to run the generator. And then today it's fine. I checked earlier. It was like partly cloudy today. But there was enough, like I checked it at like 6 o'clock and it was at 93% and um, it was charging. So not bad at all. Not bad. At all. So I got a couple things I wanted to tell you before we jump into the topic, give a chance for some people to get in here before we get started. Uh, I just was talking to one of the guys who's a member of my group down here. And he said, I've been watching your channels for years. And he said, uh, I noticed all of a sudden, he goes, I was unsubscribed. He goes. It wasn't me. He goes, I didn't do it. He goes, and then I, so I resubscribed. He goes, and a week later I was unsubscribed again. So that does happen folks. So if you're all of a sudden, if you ever notice you're not getting updates from me, you're not seeing my live streams, you're not seeing the, getting the notifications, uh, please check to make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, obviously that's not anything he did. That is a YouTube thing. So, uh, it's just something to pay attention to. And, uh, just part of the games that they like to play. And uh, so, you know, the way that you can, uh, uh, hey, I just noticed I'm unsub. Yeah, it's just like I said, it's just part of the game that YouTube does play. So just, you know, I'm just letting you guys be aware so that you can stay on top of that. And, uh, you know, make sure you're occasionally checking to see if you're still subscribed or not subscribed. And uh, like I said, if you're not getting notifications, I post every single day, very rarely. Um, do I take a day off? So, hey, original, how you doing tonight, buddy? Good to see you. 
Oh, so I have some other news I'll share with you guys. So I was out and about today and I'm driving and all of a sudden I pass a house and I see four or five German shepherds. So I turn around and I went back and I pulled in the driveway um, and uh, they had one shepherd out uh, chained up in front. They had a couple more in the backyard and then the lady like shooed three into the house okay and um she comes out and she goes can i help you and i said maybe you can i go let me show you and i pulled out my phone and i showed her uh, a picture of hella and i said uh, do you have any mails that are not fixed and she goes i do I said and i said well i said i have a female that's in heat right now and uh, i would like to breed her and she goes well we have two she goes, we got some younger shepherds because it's not they don't have a puppy mill robber, but what they have had happen, um, they they're they seem like very decent people. And they said they tell people if it doesn't work out with the dog, bring the dog back and they'll take the dog. And that's why they have so many dogs, because people are a-holes and they don't uh, take care of their animals, you know, or they the puppy phase goes away. And then all of a sudden now they have this big old dog. Um, and they realize that it's hard work and they don't want to deal with that, which is very sad. In my opinion, it's sad. Um, it's not the dog's fault. That's the owner's fault. Or they don't give it the attention that it needs. And German shepherds can be very destructive um, if left alone and not giving the attention that they need to have. Now, granted, we all have to go to work and do our job and all that type of stuff. They don't know that. They just know that their master's gone and they're not happy about it. So, but anyway, um, so uh, I, I, she said, well, her husband was an EMT, and so um, I gave her my card, and I said, you know, if, if you, you know, and she was like, well, he's off this weekend. She said he was off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I said, well, I, I'd love to try to get the, you know, the dogs together. Now, what they have, they have uh, a long-haired German Shepherd, traditional German Shepherd, long-haired German Shepherd, and then they also have an all-black German Shepherd. So, and I guess he comes from, they're saying really good bloodlines from Germany. So I'm almost tempted to breed her with the black German Shepherd. I think that would be amazing, amazing puppies. Um, so I will um, be talking with him and the dog looked like a good sized dog. And, you know, obviously she's a good sized girl. So uh, I think that's the way we may go with that. And so... Um, I'm just going to wait to hear from them and we'll go from there and uh, hopefully the husband calls me and we can get her. This weekend is when she's ready. Uh, I'll be honest with you. She had gone into heat and about the 10th, 11th day of going into heat. That's the time you want to get them together. So, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I want, like I said, I, I've told you guys, if she has puppies, um, I'm keeping at least two of the puppies, at least two of the puppies. Um, you know, I love the dog to death and, uh, you know, people, I, I hear, ah, oh, oh, you know, you should do rescue of dogs and stuff like, listen, I want her puppies. That's what I want. I want her puppies. And I know that I can, uh, you know, people, I've had people on the chat and, you know, people contacted me and said, listen, you know, you breed her. I want one of her puppies. And so, you know, we will, uh, we will go from there. So, but, uh. But uh, anyway, so that's um, that's what we're gonna do, and uh, so hopefully we have a uh, a litter of shepherds, and uh, yeah, shepherds need uh, jobs and exercise. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. So you know, um, I'm outside, she's with me. So you know, the only time that she gets locked up and she goes into the kennel is when I have to go somewhere. That's the only time. Otherwise, she is with me all the time. So, at the thinks she's a dog, that's funny. Well, but anyway, so there, that that's what's going on on that aspect. Just sharing that information with you guys. So, what do we got? Two forty nine in the chat. We got hundred and four thumbs up. So, if you have not shot a thumbs up yet, uh, I how long does she stay in heat? Um, general, it's generally once they go into heat, it's like a couple of weeks. But generally, it's the tenth, eleventh day of them being in heat that they are ready to go that they're really ready to uh to uh you know to go from there so but uh 
Mine's on her third week, wondering if that's normal. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's like they, they go through a cycle, and then it'll it'll either be like once they're done with being in heat, it's either four or six months that they, like, now she was in heat in November, and so she just went into heat again. So for her, her cycle is four months. So, you know, and I don't plan on breeding her to death. That's not what my intention is in any way, shape, or form. Um you know, I like to see what uh, the puppies are going to look like, obviously, and, and decide which ones I want to keep. <laughs> so we will go from there. But uh, anyway, um, that being said, let's uh, let's. Oh, anyway, so we got 168 in the chat. We got 123 in the thumbs up. If you have not shot a thumbs up yet, uh, please do so to show support for the channel. And I do appreciate that ahead of time. It really does make a big difference with the algorithms. So I do appreciate it for that reason as well. Also, again, if you are not subscribed to the channel, I would ask you to please subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon, um, you know, to get all notifications as well. All right. So um, where are they going to grow? I don't know what you mean by that. I have no idea what you mean by that. So now I was telling Rob, I was talking to Rob today. He goes, well, where are you going to keep them once she, you know, once she has the puppies? I said, oh, there's a, I go, because Rob's place is down by the spring. Okay. Just so you know. And I said, uh, oh, there's a place down by the spring. I'm going to put him in that building and let him pee and poop all over the floor in there. And he started laughing. So it just, no, they're, they would, uh, you know, once she's, once she has the puppies, you know, um, I'll keep her as close to me as I possibly can, you know, and then if I have to, obviously if I have to leave, then they'll go in the kennel. So, but uh, that's where she's going to be with me no matter what. Right? Yes. All right. So anyway, all right, let's get into this discussion. Um, unless you have been hiding under a rock somewhere, by now, uh, you have all seen the video. Hopefully you've seen the video um, and not just heard it on the news, but watched the surveillance video of a large cargo ship. Uh, well, I know you got to go down now. Stop, baby. I love you, but it's not the time for that. Um, large cargo ship hit the bridge, took the entire bridge out. Uh, terrible, terrible situation. Uh, I think they said seven cars went into, um, the river and, uh, you know, uh, they did rescue two people. One was in critical condition and the other one, um, I, I guess, was OK. I couldn't imagine surviving that kind of a fall in a vehicle into a river. Uh, but uh, they're uh, definitely looking at the situation. Now, here's where we have to be careful because we're going to speculate a little bit, folks. OK, we're going to share some information. And then we're going to speculate. All right. We have a situation where this ship is going. No tugboats around it to guide it. Number one, right? Let's 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 just break this down. We're going to break this down. Um, no tugboat with it to get it. Now, here's something I don't know if you guys knew or not. They talked about, well, you know, the power went out, and this is why this happened. Well, here's something you didn't know. There's more than one way to steer those type of ships if the power goes out. They can steer those ships if the power goes out, right? Uh, they found two bodies in a truck. Okay. Um, the question, uh, TNT, um, TNT, was, oh, TN Twister. Okay. Uh, question I have. Were the two bodies that they found in the trunk, did they know the Clintons? Too soon? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, anyway, that's terrible. I know it's horrible of me, but that's where the mind goes. Can't help it. Um, but anyway, um, so there is more than one way to steer a ship. So just because the power went out doesn't mean um, that you can't steer that ship. Now, if you watch the video, like I watched the video, the lights all went out. And then all of a sudden, the, just at the, you know, the, the um, very close to the last minute, the lights come back on, the ship turned right into the thing. Now, I'm not saying it was intentional, okay? I am not saying it was intentional, but 
looking at it from a perspective of just watching the videos, that whole situation sure doesn't seem normal. I will just put that out there. Now, of course, we're going to get the information that the news media has been given this piece of paper. Here's your piece of paper, right? This is what you're going to tell the public. We've been given that information. Oh, this was a complete accident and, you know, nothing to see here. Another nothing burger, uh, just like the one up at the border between Canada and the United States. That was nothing. That went away. We're not talking about that anymore. Nothing to see here, right? So we have a situation where it looks as though that ship turned directly and went right into that pillar causing the entire bridge to collapse. Now, I'm not saying it was intentional. That's not what I'm saying here. I have to be very careful on YouTube. Now, I have my opinion, but I'm not going to give it on here. All I do is share information, letting you guys know that there's more than one way to steer the ship. Just because the power goes out doesn't mean they still can't steer the ship. Okay. Terrible situation. Any loss of life is unacceptable in any of those type of situations. Let's say, and just again, for, for the sake of argument, it was intentional. Let's just say it was intentional. They're never going to tell us that it was intentional because they don't want to cause panic with the public. That's a fact. That is a fact. So I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying it was, and I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying from looking at the video, watching what happened, uh, bad, bad situation. So... And again, so why wasn't there any of the tugboats to guide those that ship where it needed to go? Aren't there usually for those great, those ships are huge, guys. Um, if you look at, okay, so I have a 20-foot shipping container up in my upper meadow, 20-foot shipping container. Those cargo ships have 40-foot shipping containers on them, and they have hundreds, hundreds of them, okay? So you're talking about a huge huge ship and so you know could again we're gonna we're speculating could there have been a takeover if you guys do you guys remember through i think it was in the suez canal and there was a ship that lost all power um they had they had talked about that it was a possibility that somebody took over controls and turned the ship and drove it into the bank and backed up the whole Suez Canal and they had all the problems and they had to come in and, and get something special brought in to be able to get that out of there, you know, and it got stuck there in the Suez Canal. And it, like I said, it backed everything up. Is there a possibility that it was taken over and then turned and driven into that thing? There is that possibility. Now, again, again I'm going to say, if that was the case, if something to that effect happened, um, they're never going to tell us that because, again, they don't want to cause panic. They don't want people to be flipping out going, oh, my God, you know, what's next? So very interesting situation. Um, again, any loss of life is tragic, in my opinion, it, it, you know, and I feel bad for those folks that that did perish in that event. But uh now you're looking, that bridge was opened in 1977. And so, you know, it's a, yeah, the entire thing stinks. Yes, yeah, Don. And it don't add up. None of it adds up. And it doesn't, uh, you know, bad, bad, like I said, bad situation. Um, now you got a, a, a situation. But it's a good thing that our president took the train across that many times. Um, if you listen to him talking Um and just so you guys know, if you were unaware, no train crosses that bridge. So, but he did say um, that he drove and took the train across that bridge many times. So that's, it's good to know. That's frightening in itself. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, crazy, unbelievable. It just, and it don't change. Don't ships have to have local pilots when moving around in port? Well, I, I usually a lot of times they'll have, like I said, again, usually a lot of times they'll have like a tugboat uh, to help guide them. So the, again, um, why wasn't why wasn't there a tugboat there to be able to, you know, because then if again, power.
comes out, tugboat just pushes it along and go, gets it right where it needs to go. Too many things again don't add up. It's it, you know it's um a, as you know uh, one of you guys on here said the whole thing stinks, and uh, you know but uh, I think who was driving it is a big clue. Well, like I said, you know we can we can read into situations and we can speculate, but again, if you watch the video, it looked like that ship was turned indirectly into that pylon. Um, that's what it looks like, you know, so you tell me if a ship has lost all control, does it all of a sudden just turn and go right into a pylon? That doesn't make sense to me. That's a, like I said, that's just, I, I'm looking at it as an outside observer. I'm not a seaman. Um, I don't, you know, do boats. Uh, you know, I've never been on the, I've been on the ocean, but I, I, I need to have Dramamine if I'm going on the ocean. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, have no knowledge of how those things work and stuff like that. But again, if you look at that, the whole thing just doesn't add up. And it's very sad. Uh, like I said, again, like I said, any loss of life, um, is a horrible, horrible thing. And, uh, but you know, you just never know. Um, I think they dropped an anchor, which would cause it to turn Richard Shaw said, okay, that's a possibility. That is a possibility. But again, Richard, as I said, even with loss of power, they could still steer the boat. Remember that. I did say that in the beginning of this live stream. Um, there are fail safes in case of loss of power that they're still able to, um, you know, able to uh, steer the boat. So. Uh, they said they dropped an anchor. Doesn't mean that they did. Well, that there you go. That's true as well. So, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like I said, it's a bad situation. Unfortunately, um, like I said, you had seven vehicles went into the water. Um, you know, they uh, somebody just said that they recovered two bodies out of a truck. Um, I know that they rescued two people, so apparently the captain didn't judge the height of his cargo very well. He they had more than enough clearance to get under the bridge. There what that wasn't um that wasn't uh that wasn't part of uh the problem. So it wasn't about the height of what was on the ship. Um, you know, it just uh who knows? Like I said, again, guys, I know everything is not Everything is not intentional. Everything's not done on purpose. But it does seem, okay, let's let's be honest. It does seem that there is a lot of accidents happening. A lot of accidents. Um, a lot of mysterious fires. Uh, there is, you know, pipelines, you know, having fires. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. And so, you know, I just, um, you know, I don't have a lot of faith. I'll, I'll put it like that. Um, when it comes to our government, I don't have a lot of, especially the ones that are in power right now. I don't have any faith in them, to be honest with you. That's just, you know, that's me uh, personally. So, you know, and uh, I don't know. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy situation. Unfortunately, um, we have to speculate because they never tell us the truth. Tony Black. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Tony. Yep, I hear you. There were Chinese cameras found on the cranes in the location. I hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard that one. Regardless of how it happened, we're going to be paying more for propane. What does that have to do with propane? Uh, Matt Dillon says three major bridges in less than a year. Major problems with the rail and the airlines. Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of um, you know, uh, but trains derail all the time. I mean that, and the reason. Let, let's be realistic. Let's go back to that. Let's talk about that for a second. Why do so many trains derail when you don't have enough crew members? When you have overworked and overtired, you know, conductors and stuff on those trains. Uh, you know, when the if you remember, I remember. The government forced them to go back to work, forced them to take the deal uh, for more money, but not sick time or not time off. 
Do you remember that? I sure do. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like, it's just, it, it's just, it's absolutely insane what's going on. Yeah. Outdated infrastructure is a huge problem. Absolutely. It is. Uh, hey, Philip, good evening. Glad to have you in the house tonight. All the way from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, you know, again, crazy, crazy stuff going on. And uh, like I said, I've talked, how many times have I talked about our infrastructure being antiquated? That needs to be a complete overhaul um, of our infrastructure. But what are we doing? We're talking about, you know, sending how many billion dollars more to, uh, they want to send more money to Ukraine, you know? And, uh, you know, it just the, the, the situation, it, it's, it's not going to change. It's not going to get better until we go in. And see, the thing, I want you guys to think about this. If we as a country, the United States of America, we could put a whole bunch of people to work, right? A whole bunch of people to work and took care of our infrastructure, not just not just the, um, the power grid, which the power grid needs a complete overhaul, okay? It is a matter of time, be it on purpose or by accident, the grid's going to go down at some point. Guaranteed it's going to go down at some point. And it's going to be blamed on X, Y, or Z. Um, it never will personal responsibility be taken for, you know, keep putting Band-Aids on something. Uh, when you have a gushing chest wound and you put Band-Aids on it, that doesn't help, okay? You need a complete overhaul of our electrical grid. That's number one. Number two, we need a overhaul of our roadways and bridges. They need to be taken care of as well. You have these bridges, um, and that bridge was, you know, built in 1977. We have a lot older bridges out there that need an overhaul, okay? Uh, so, you know, and then you're talking heavy traffic, and it sucks, and it's no fun, and it's not, you know, and there's a lot to do with that, but, you know, it has to be done. The other thing is our waterways. Our water system needs an overhaul as well. And people don't think about that one. But the key is we need to, uh, you know, take care of these things. And that should be the priority. Not China, not Ukraine, not Taiwan, uh, not any other country other than the United States getting ourselves squared away. Why are we not doing that? Why do we keep pushing these foreign wars and supporting this and supporting that? Um, I, oh, I got to tell you what I just saw today as well. Okay, and well, a couple things that I saw, and I want to I want to address them, and I want to talk about like especially the first one. So I don't know if you guys saw they're talking. Uh, all the latest polls came out, and uh, you know Biden's still behind Trump, but he's picking up momentum. For what? If you went strictly on Biden's record, okay. The southern border is a disaster. That is a disaster that falls directly into his lap. Least we not forget the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, right, where we left how much equipment behind and a lot of our soldiers were killed and all that type of stuff. So they're talking about, you know, oh, yeah, everything is going. Well, they keep telling us the economy is great. Everything's gangbusters. Jobs are up and everything is wonderful. Uh, except when you ask everyday Americans, how are things for you? Are they better or are they worse under this administration? And it'd be amazed at how many people say how much worse it is. Now, I want to remind you guys, we're going to go back in time. And there was this election, not the last election, but the election before, the election before, when Trump was going against Hillary Clinton. And what did they say? Oh, my God. Hillary Clinton's going to win in a landslide. It's going to be a landslide. Not, not even close. It's going to be over. It's over. She's going to win this state. She's going to win it. It's going to be wonderful. Um, she's got it in a landslide. And what happened, folks? You remember what happened? All the pollsters and all that. Wait a minute. Trump won that election. Isn't that an interesting how when he went against Hillary Clinton, how that worked? So whatever they tell you when they tell you about these polls and this, that, this poll and that poll and um, there's two other polls recently that I'm going to talk about that they just talked about as well. And I'm like, yeah, they're full of crap, too, I, in my in my humble opinion, of course. 
So anyway, so when they keep telling us that Trump is on a comeback or not Trump, I mean, Biden's on a comeback, you know, going head to head against Trump and, you know, he's picking up momentum and he's picking up steam. Yeah, I, I'm not buying it. OK, I'm just not buying it. But anyway, that being said, another poll came out uh, and they were talking about um, talking about Israel and Hamas. Right. And they said in this poll, they did this poll and more Americans now are against Israel in the situation with Hamas. I'm not buying that one either, folks. I'm just not. I, I don't believe it. Because if you look at the situation critically, from a critical eye, in what Hamas did, right? What Hamas did, how could you ever say, you know, oh, poor Hamas, we, we, we need to go in and we need to stop this and Israel needs to stop. Israel's doing exactly what they need to do. Here's something that I find absolutely amazing. Now, again, before I start this, I could give a crap what your sexual orientation is. I don't care who you sleep with, who you don't sleep with. That's your business. That is not my business. I don't care. I have no hunt or no dog in that hunt. I could care less. You sleep with who you want to. It doesn't make no difference to me. But when I see protesters and it's gays for Hamas, okay, and they're saying, oh, you know, Israel needs to stop and poor Hamas. Do these people in our homosexual community in the United States, do they realize that if Hamas was in charge here, they would all be killed? They would kill them. I, I, I just, it's just, it's so, the stupidity of people is unbelievable to me. If these people had a chance, they would take you up. If they knew you were homosexual or lesbian or transgendered, they would take you up to a top of a building and they would throw you off. So wh why are you supporting those people? That's what I don't get. I don't ever get that. Um, women in this country, okay? And this is what I, I mean. Look at how far we've come as a country for women's rights. Women got the right to vote. Um, they can get jobs. They can do anything, you know, anything, anywhere, right? But these people are going to support an area where they treat their women like crap. They're treated like garbage. You know, it, it just, they have honor killings. Well, you she was disrespectful, so I killed her. And that's okay? I, I, I don't get it, folks. I really, truly don't get it. So I had somebody in the comments um and they they made a comment and i'll tell you what my response was and they were like well you have no idea you don't know the history of, and blah 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 with israel and hamas and blah 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 so my reply to them was i said enlighten us you know what their reply was no so there you go so sorry i'm not buying your crap i'm not buying it I'm just not doing it okay it is what it is um, again, I, I stand very strongly in my support when people are innocently attacked and butchered and killed just because of their religion and who they are and what they stand for. And when there is a retaliation by that group of people against those other people, and then you go, um, Another troll trying to push my buttons. I didn't even see it, so I don't know what they said. So, But thank you for taking care of them, JJ. Didn't even see it. I don't care. And like I said, doesn't make any difference. But I appreciate you being on top of it and, and take care of it. So, But uh, again, uh, you know, you have an area of the world where everybody wants to kill these people. And because they're fighting back and they're winning, and their job is to eradicate Hamas, good for them. Wipe them out. And, you know, they, they have told the civilians to get out of harm's way. And so if the civilians don't get out of harm's way, whose fault is it? Is it Israel's fault? Or would it be possibly Hamas's fault? Maybe if you didn't have your some of your stuff in uh, under schools and under hospitals and those type of thing. Hmm. Maybe you should put yourself out in the open where you could, you know, if you're going to fight, if you want to be a tough guy, you know. But uh, again, that situation, um, and so that whole thing, yeah, why would anyone take Hamas aside? Exactly, Susie Q, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. 
All right. Uh, the wildflower. That's a, you know, another point I was actually going to bring up. Who is hearing anything about the support for the people in Hawaii? That those huge fires that destroyed everything. Do you hear anything? Does anybody hear anything about Hawaii and what happened with those people? You hearing anything? Right. But yet we want to give six or sixty billion dollars to Ukraine. Uh, here's the distraction. Here's the distraction. Don't pay attention to what's happened over here. We're not going to talk about this one anymore. Can anybody ask me how many? So we're I'm on a roll, folks. So I'm, I'm rolling. I'm going to keep rolling. How many people, right, from the Black Book? What Black Book do you think I'm talking about? Hmm, let's see. Oh, Jeffrey Epstein's Black Book. How many people that were clients of Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein that were sleeping with underage girls and underage boys, let's not forget that either, because we had, you know, certain people that had that uh, proclivity that were going to the island as well. <clears throat> I'm not saying anything out of hand. I have a question. That's all I have, Critter, um, critter Lover. How many people have been prosecuted and charged with sleeping with minors from that black book? How many? How many have gone to jail? How many have gone to prison? None. Absolutely none. Why not? That's a question, right? They have the black book. They know who was going to the island. I almost, and I'm not saying that this is this is happening for sure, but I would almost bet that somewhere, I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein was a very smart individual and recorded people doing things that they shouldn't do secretly, I'm sure. But I would almost guess that there might be tapes somewhere of people in positions of power doing naughty, bad things, and it was recorded. That would not surprise me at all. That's all I'm going to say with that. I'm not saying it's there. I'm not saying there's tapes there, but that would not surprise me. But again, why are, why are people upset with Israel and Hamas that has nothing to do with the United States, but nobody gives a crap about all these children that were victims, and why are not these people that were going to this island? They have records. They have flight records. They know who was there. They know how many times they were there. Um, they weren't going there for vacation, apparently. I'm not saying that they weren't, but you know there is speculation that there was a lot of underage girls, right? So you know, and again, and boys. But uh, so again, that's just that's a question. Why is that not being talked about? daily on the news, right? Here's the latest distraction. Pay attention to this. Don't pay attention to that. We're not going to talk about that anymore. If that goes away. Forget about it. Don't look at it. Why not, right? P. Diddy is on the lamb. Did he take off? So, wish we could live in peace, agree to disagree. That would be ideal, Stevo, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, in this day and age, um, that's not how they work. That's unfortunately is not how he's still in hiding. Yeah, because he doesn't want to go the same way as um, uh, who's the other guy that's doing like 30 years for sleeping with underage girls. Um, God, I can't think of his name. Um Hey, Ed, refresh you're really blurry. It's got to be on your end. It's not on my end. My my end is perfectly. Yeah, R. Kelly. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Yeah, Prince Andrew. What? Well, he was, you know, he Prince Andrew had to take his medals off and stuff, and he wasn't able to do a few things, you know, if you guys remember that one. So, but he's still over there, and he's still in power, and they know what he was doing, right? They 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 know, right? That's what they're saying. They know what he was doing. But, hey, here's a better idea. Well, let's try to extradite Julian Assange so that they can try him because he let, let, uh, let, um, let out information um, that made the government look bad. Well, huh, that's terrible. What we, we should go and throw him in a black hole somewhere. I, I guess they just stopped. Uh, they won't extradite him until they take the death penalty uh, off the table for him. Um, he's over in the UK. He's been locked up for five years in a prison in the UK. So, 
Whispering Pines P. Diddy did not kill himself. Oh my God, that's too funny. Now, now, now. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on that we are not going to be privy to. Uh, there's information that they want to have out there, you know, and there's other information that you're never going to see, um, you know, and that's just the reality of it. They're never going to tell us the full truth of anything. So that's why a lot of times when something happens, we speculate, we need to talk about it. You know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, just like the Boeing whistleblower well, mysteriously killed himself and told a friend of his, I won't kill myself. Hmm, that's interesting. How about the doctor? If you guys, I would see, I, I love these type of things. Okay, the doctor that worked at the CDC that drowned in a creek. What about that one? Do you guys even remember that one? That was interesting. I thought anybody that wants to come out and be a whistleblower, man, they hammer these guys. They hammer them. So they want, they don't want you to come out and say anything. And a lot of people won't do it because for some reason they like to be alive. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, like I say, folks, um, what do we got? 389 in the chat. We got 230 on the thumbs up. If you have not uh, shot a thumbs up yet, uh, please do so to show support for the channel. And again, I do appreciate that uh, ahead of time. It really makes a huge, huge difference with the algorithms. Um, so I thank you for that reason as well. Also, if you are not subscribed to the channel, I would ask you to please subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get all notifications as well. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, again, I do appreciate that. I appreciate the support. So, and, you know, keep checking. Make sure you're still subscribed because they, that game has been going on. So, uh, R. Kelly unveiled himself because of the WMD report prior to the invasion that was bad. Well, there was all kinds of videos with, oh, Do Dr. Kelly you're talking about? Okay. Yep. 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 Um, I, like, like with R. Kelly, he had, I mean, he was videotaping himself uh, doing stuff. So he screwed himself, you know. I mean, that's the reality of that. At the Port of Baltimore is the main import area for propane and other fuel sugar into the U.S. Um, they can truck from the port across the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which is no longer doable. I gotcha. Okay. Whispering Pines and gas jump 50 cents here today. Oh, any excuse, any excuse to jump up the uh, gas prices. Absolutely. Um, I'm sorry that the gas went up that bad for you. That's craziness. I know our gas went up a uh, few days, a few days ago, it was up another 10 cents. And then it went up, it was up another penny today. Uh, we're up to now, we're, 349 uh for gas and it was at 299 not that long ago so you know it, it's just it's uh whispering pines says 365 okay yeah what are your guys is where you're at in the country where, what's your gas gonna like i said we went from 299 and we are now at 349 so that's 50 cents there was a huge gas station explosion in bowling greens texas today ah okay i did not know that one i didn't see that one Robert says 379, 359 up 10 cents, 339 in Indiana. Uh, Robert said 299 to 305. Bubble one says 345. Jared saying almost four. Uh, full of hope. Well, you're up in can or no, you're full of hope. You're over across the pond. Yeah, your guys' prices over there are nuts. Uh, Steve O 485. Michigan Lifestyles is saying 342. Carol is saying 313. Clyde down in Florida is saying uh, 367, 720 in Canada. Yeah, that's nuts too. You guys pay way too much up there as well. Shannon saying 319 in Waterloo, New York, 379 in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's uh, just paid 313 in New Central New York. Wow. Okay. Because yeah, I asked my daughter where what where it was at where she was, and she was saying it was 349 over there. So. Port Arthur, Texas is up to three, 359 a liter here in BC, Canada. That's crazy, crazy. So, I mean, the prices are going up and up and up again, you know, and uh, this is not good. That's not good. When everything is as bad as it is financially, 
and then you're getting hammered with the gas prices going up on top of it. Just not a good, good situation at all. Not at all. Oh, there was another poll real quick, and then we're going to do egg count after I talk about this other poll. So there's this whole, hey, RC Kev, um, if the majority won't go green, we are accomplishing nothing. We're just torturing ourselves. You're 100% correct. I've talked about that how many times. Um, thank you so much for the donation. I do appreciate it. Yeah, when you have China and India that have the majority of the people, and they keep building coal fire plants, and like I said, they have a whole lot more people than we do, um, and it doesn't make any difference. Uh, you look at the Canadian tax where they're doing the carbon tax on people now, you know, and Canada's supposed to just supposed to eat that, you know. So I, I just, um, like I said, we're going to go into the egg count here. Maybe we should do the egg count first, and then I'll talk. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead. Um, before we do that, well, don't start doing your uh, guesses yet. Um, we're at 368. We're at 255 on a thumbs up. So again, if you have not shot a thumbs up yet, uh, please do so to show support for the channel. And again, I do appreciate that. Also, again, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get all notifications um, as well. All right. So let's starting right now. Egg count. How many eggs today? And yes or no for the white hen. So we will go from there. And we'll see what you guys have to say. So give you guys a moment to get your guesses, and I will let you know. All right. If you had the same exact guess as Delbert Jones, and I think this is not his first win. I know Delbert, I think, has won before. But if you had the same guess as Delbert Jones with six eggs today, which means automatically, yes, the white hen laid, um, then you are 100% correct. So congratulations to Delbert. You've won absolutely nothing, but you are happy about it. All six hens laid today. I was like, when I got, I was like, yes, they all laid. Um, last two days, I think in a row, it was like five. So, um, you know, they're they're being much more consistent now that the weather's getting better. Um, and even over the winter, they were not doing bad. Um, but uh, they're, they're, they're definitely uh, picking it up. So they're, they're doing a good job. They're so much fun. Um, I, like I said, I, uh, at least my second correct guess. Okay. Yeah, I figured, I knew you had won before, Delbert. I just don't know if it was more than once. Well, now you got at least twice. So there you go. Two time champion. <laughs> so, all right. Let's get back into what we were talking about here. So, another poll. And I love these polls again, because my, my thing is who are they polling? Where are they asking these questions at? And what geographic location is like probably the biggest thing? Okay. So if you guys saw it, like uh, they just opened a, a new office, you know, oh, Biden's doing so much for gun control. And, you know, their 21 states have the red flag law and, you know, and all this nonsense that they got going on. And they're trying to be more restrictive. And and Harris is going to oversee this new office. It's opening opening up for gun control and all this blah, 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 blah. And they said uh, this new poll just came out that it said, uh, Hey, Freddie left you. Um, hey, Ed, thanks for speaking the facts. I got a kick out of the people out there who have no rebuttals or arguments and just resort to name calling. Oh, yeah, you got to love that. Because um, it's like when you tell the truth, you don't have to hide anything. You just give facts and you tell the truth. And if people don't like it, too bad. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the donation as well. I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much. So anyway, this poll comes out and it says, more people now are in favor of gun control in the United States. Again, I am not buying it. I'm just not buying it. Um, you know, do they think that we're that stupid? Oh, please. Be like Pol Pot over in Cambodia. I think it was Cambodia. Take away all the guns. And then, then what happens? Then a tyrannical government can do whatever it wants to do. And they killed like a million people over there. 
Uh, they killed educators and doctors and nurses and everything else, right? Nazi Germany took away the guns. And what happened after Nazi Germany took away the guns? Get on the train. It's okay. We're just relocating you. You'll be fine. Trust us, right? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, you have to pay attention to history. You have to pay attention to history. When you give up your rights and you give up control of what you have or what you can do, there's always going to be uh, a problem. And people are going to be killed in the, in the big scheme of things when those things happen. So, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's insanity. The whole thing is insanity. Um, you know, you keep watching these things and, and, you know, but, um, uh, it just, it's nuts. The whole thing is nuts, but, uh, we just have to sit here and we're supposed to just continue to take it. And the point is we don't have to continue to take it. We could stand up collectively if we wanted to realistically, if we wanted to and said no more. And then they would have to do something about it. If you give up your rights to stop to stop suffering, your suffering has just begun. Well, here, here's a, here's a you know this is a fact. If you, as a law-abiding citizen, give up your guns, all right, this is a fact. Then the only people that are going to have guns are going to be cops, the military, and criminals. That's it. And then the criminals know at that point, I can break into this house anytime I want to, and I know I'm not going to be shot. Why? Because they're not allowed to have guns. You know, think about it, folks. You know, march on Washington, D.C. with 10 million people. I wish we could do something like that, Robert. But to, to organize something like that, well, you, look what happened in Canada. I mean, you think about it. What did they do to the, and they were peaceful protesters, right? Technically, I mean, I'm sure there was a few bad apples in the crowd. But what I what I always find interesting are the bad apples in the crowd. And again, this is just a question. Could they possibly be infiltrators, government agents looking to try to stir things up, perhaps? You never know. They took the truckers' money. They froze those accounts. Anybody that was supporting the truckers and all that type of stuff, they took the trucks, right? Put them out in the field. Had the windows down so the weather. And Canada's not the greatest for weather. Um, and you know, and they arrested a whole bunch of people. And you know, those people were not up there tearing stuff up. They're not like they don't protest like we protest here in the United States. When we protest here in the United States, and depending on what side it is, if it's an approved protest or not an approved protest, then, uh, you know, you can burn and loot and steal and beat people up and hurt people if you're on a certain side. And if you're on the other side, then you're going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I mean, pay attention to it. Look at it. Tell me I'm wrong. Right? Tell me I'm wrong. And I'm not telling you what sides... I'm just giving the information. You look at the information. You tell me I'm wrong with what I just said. You know, so uh, again, it's just uh, things are not going in a good direction. We have uh, a tremendous amount of people here in the United States that came in here illegally that do have bad intentions. They absolutely have bad intentions. And we didn't catch them all, folks. I guarantee you that either. Um, tolls are up 15 in New York. Oh, I know that they're doing, um, for like there's a like a tax now to be driving on the island and stuff like that. And I mean, it's just gotten insanity. It's, it's just every time you turn around, they're digging deeper in your pockets. Um, I've been in New York City... I think twice, both times was go to see the Yankees. Um, both times that I went, I took uh, my nephew, Adam, when he was young. And then I took Josh when, when Josh was young. And we went down, um, we stayed in New Jersey and we went, uh, you know, to the Yan Yankees and watched. Uh, me and Josh went and saw 
uh, three games, I think. And then, um, and then, uh, Adam and I saw two, I believe. So, you know, $15 toll for Manhattan. That's crazy. That is absolutely. Tolls go up every year here in Pennsylvania, Robert's saying. Yep. Yep. Well, you get the lottery, right? They said that all this money from the lottery is going to, you know, do things for the schools and stuff. Where's the accounting? I That's just a curiosity question that I have, like with New York State, when they proved, uh, you know, like the Powerball and the Mega Ball and all that stuff. All this money, all this tax money, that revenue from the lottery was going to go uh, to help... Uh, you know, schools and all this type of stuff. I'm just curious how much went to help schools and where's the accounting? Because we're never, um, you know. Oh, Sean saying, I'm convinced there are squatters on the property next to our... Yeah, I was talking to Heather about that, Sean. Yeah, and she was. And that very well could be. Very well could be. Because those people don't even live in New York State, the people that own that property. Uh, they're not even in New York State, and they've never been there. <laughs> so, but uh, but again, you know. Um, oh yeah, you look at the tax on cigarettes. So, and, and I've used this argument before, folks. Okay, and and we'll talk about this really quickly. Here's here's another one that makes absolutely no sense to me. So, cigarettes are bad for you. We all know that. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. They're bad for you, right? So cigarette smoking became very vilified. Uh, you know, there used to be an ashtray in every car, okay? Uh, you went to a restaurant. You could smoke in a restaurant. You could smoke in a bar. Uh, you can do all. You could do all those things. And then, um, you know, then they put these huge taxes on because, you know, the, the cost of the health care, uh, you know, for, you know, the drain on the system because of cigarette smoking and blah, blah, blah. Now, Here's the reality of cigarette smoking. You can smoke cigarettes for 40 years, right? 40 years, let's say. And, uh, you know, maybe down the road, you're going to have problems and it's going to kill you from the cigarette smoking. You know, and that's not debatable. I mean, it's doing damage to you. Um, you know, that's a fact, okay? But, but in the same breath, why is there no tax on fast food? That's a question, right? Shouldn't there be a tax on fast food? Because you look at the obesity problem that we have in this country. Here's another delightful fact that you guys may like or may not like, okay? The obesity situation that we have here in the United States is the single biggest drain on the healthcare system in this country. In this country, the biggest healthcare drain in this country. OK, the obesity problem. Now, here's a question that I would have for you guys. How many, how many 600 pound 60 year olds do you know? How many, again, somebody that you know that was 600 pounds, how many of them are alive at 60 years old? I'll, I'll wait because I already know what the answer is. There are none. OK, there are none. And the problem is we are in a society now that heaven forbid you fat shame anybody, heaven forbid you say anything to them or you're, you're just, you're a horrible, terrible person, um, you know, and then they get mad when the seat on the airplane. And, and I'll tell you what, I've, I've flown many, many times, many, many times. And, uh, you know, you get on that airplane and you go, please, please, no, don't, don't put me next to you know, a great big, huge person because they're going to be rolling over onto your side. There's not enough room. Those seats are not big enough. I mean, it's not, and what a, a lot of times what they do now is they make somebody that big, you know, buy two seats and then they get pissed off. Well, you know what, when you're big enough that you're taking up that much room, why should I be having my flight like this? Because you're so heavy that all your, you know, your excess is on top of me. That's not right, you know. Yeah, there's not enough room for skinny people. Exactly. So, you know, again, and that's not trying to be mean or, I'm, oh, I'm terrible. You're horrible for saying. I'm pointing out the obvious, okay. 
you know, there was uh, somebody had did an article and it was like, uh, you know, fat acceptance and blah, blah, blah. And it had all these vloggers, right, that were like, you know, great big. And I'm talking, I'm not talking somebody that is 50 pounds overweight. I'm talking about people that are two and 300 pounds plus overweight. Okay. And they had all these vlogs and, you know, fat acceptance and blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what it said? This vlogger dead. That vlogger dead. This vlogger dead. What did they die from? They died from obesity. It's killing yourself. That's what that is. And I'm supposed to look at you and go, oh, that's perfectly fine. You know, you go, you go, just because you want to do it, it's okay. Um, you know, when I see a child and the kid is hugely overweight at a very, very young age, that to me, and, and it's strictly, again, this is my opinion only, that's child abuse. And the reason that that's child abuse is because you are setting that child up for a lifetime of failure. Anybody that knows, anybody that's been around long enough knows, we don't get skinnier as we get older. We put on more weight. <laughs> that's what we do. I mean, I graduated high school, folks, at uh, 142 pounds at my height, right? So, but, uh, you know, stop talking about obesity. Why? Just, you know, I mean, I'm 220 now. So, you know, I might've gained a little weight since high school. Now I did fill out if I was like 180, 185, that would actually be a good weight for me. I'm too heavy. I know I'm too heavy. So I'm not like trying to fat shame other people and say, I'm, I look fantastic. No, I don't. I'll be the first to say it. I'll be the first to say it. I need to lose weight, you know, so, but, uh, anyway, um, you know, just, uh, what are we at? We at 284 in the chat. We're at 287 on the thumbs up. Um, if you have not shot that thumbs up yet, please do so to show support for the channel. Um, I do appreciate that. It really does make a huge, huge difference with the algorithms. Also, um, it, if you are not subscribed to the channel, I would ask you also to please subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get all notifications as well. And I do appreciate that as well. So I'm not trying to fat shame anybody to try to make anybody feel bad. But the reality is the reality. Um, it's not healthy for you. Um, it's not good for you. And if we all lost weight and got down to a, a good weight, we would be in better shape and we would live a whole lot longer. So, all right. We're going to do shout outs. Let's do that. We start out with Heavenly Hills Homestead. That is Ryan, uh, Growing Giant Vegetables. Really good guy. Um, going to be really interesting to see what he does this year. There is Icky Can. Uh, he is up in Canada, living off grid up in Canada. Good guy up there. There is Alaska Prepper. Uh, that is Rudy. Real good guy as well. Um, up in Alaska doing his thing. There's Angry Prepper. That is Jason down in New York City. Uh, Jason is a squared away dude and uh, a lot of respect for him. Uh, there is Alaska Granny. We have the Sean James channel. Sean James and my self-reliance. Same guy, two different channels. Uh, Catbird, I lost 180 pounds and his name was Eric. Oh my God, that's funny. I like that. I've heard that before when people, yeah, I lost 180 pounds of ugly fat or, or dead weight. That's the other one, dead weight. That's what usually people say. Uh, let's see. We have, um, there's Demcad. Demcad is a good guy as well. Definitely worth to listen to. You have Corporal's Corner. There's Bjorn Hansen. We have ADK Man up in the index. There is Bizarizza Jizza who does the Carrington Chronicles. Another really interesting, uh, uh, story and definitely worth to listen to. You have, uh, Marfugal News, Adam and Dax out on the West Coast in Seattle doing their thing out there. You have Magic Prepper. He is in North Dakota. Uh, you have Wrangle Star. That is Cody. Cody's a good guy. Really good channel. A lot of good information on his channel as well. Uh, there's Red Poppy Ranch. There's Survival Lily coming at us out of Europe, letting us know what's happening over across the pond. Uh, you have Kyle's Cabin. Kyle and Sierra doing their thing up in Minnesota. Nice young couple. Uh, definitely fun to watch what they're doing. There's Bush Radical and Girl in the Woods. Husband, wife team, uh, two different channels, really good people, a lot of great information on their channels. There's Green Greggs, another good guy. You have Southern Print One with his Boots on the Ground series. Uh, very interesting to see what he's got going on there. There is Gray Man Prepping. 
you have Doug and Stacy. Doug and Stacy have been around a long time. Great channel. A lot of good information. You have the nomadic movement uh, down in Panama. Nice young couple down there living off grid, following their dream in uh, South America. Uh, you have the Green Dream Project uh, out in Arizona in the desert, showing you what it takes to live in the desert, and they're really good people as well. Uh, camping with Steve, Steve Wallace doing stealth camping. Uh, very interesting with what he's doing as well. There's uh, uh, Bush Doctor Survival. You have Monkey Works. There is the Needy Homesteader. Uh, good channel. She's been around for a long time. A lot of good information on her channel. Uh, Boss of the Swamp, another master builder. Uh, unbelievable to watch what he does as well. Really cool. Um, I, I wish I had that kind of skill. I do not. Uh, there is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Uh, Diamond's a real good guy. Very, very smart. Anything you want to know about the Grand Solar Minimum, that's a guy to look up. There is Patera with the Appalachian Homestead. Another straight shooter. She just says it like it is, and I respect that a lot. Uh, I think that is a good thing. There is City Prepper. You have Lumina Acres. There is Suspicious Observer, uh, letting you know what's going on with the sun, all the sunspots and everything like that. Really, really interesting channel. There's Bear Independent. You have the Uneducated Economist. There is Bushcraft Bear in the Canary Islands of La Palma. There is Mary Greeley News, giving you all the latest information of what's going on with Yellowstone and everything like that. Really interesting, uh, the information that she brings. There's Adapt 2030. You have Malachi's Corner. Uh, truth be told with Tara, if you're going to get your weather, folks, there's only one guy you should be getting your weather from, and that is Ryan Hall, y'all. Ryan Hall's a good guy, uh, very passionate about the weather, but he gives back to the community in a huge way as well. So I got a lot of respect for him. There is Russell Brand. Um, I like Russell Brand as well. Gives you the information, lets you decide what you want to do with it. Uh, Deep South Homestead, another very family-friendly oriented channel. Uh, definitely worth to listen to there as well. You have The Outsider up in Maine. Uh, betting on Alaska, that is the son of Bush Radical and Girl in the Woods, starting his journey um, at a very young age of 18. Uh, and he's learning, but he seems like a good kid. Uh, so there is The Fit Farmer. You have Prep Rebel. Simple Life Reclaimed. There is Townsend's. Townsend showing you what it's like to live in the 1800s. Um, and I think that's really, really interesting as well. You have the prepared mind. There's pinball preparedness down in Tennessee. You have East Tennessee preparedness, the economic ninja. And last but not least, Little House Off Gritty. Uh, a lot of good information, and they're also from Tennessee. A lot of good channels out there, a lot of good information. I know you guys have put other channels that you like in the chat, which is perfectly fine. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I can't give a shout out to everybody. So, but there's a lot of good channels. Uh, we should be supporting each other. We are a small niche community, if you will. And, uh, you know, I think it's important that we definitely try to support each other. And that's why I do the shout out. So, um, again, guys, I'm going to reiterate. I think this is really important. I don't want you guys to be victims. Uh, I want you to be proactive. I want you to be able to control what you can control. Uh, when you prepare the best way that you possibly can, putting plans in place, getting supplies, uh, you know, having maps, you know, medical supplies, being wa ways to be able to protect what you have, um, it all is important and it all comes together. And I think that that is really important and we should just continue to try to do that um, the best of our abilities. And when something happens, we'll ha all have to deal with it at that point in time. Um, and hopefully, you know, I, I always say, I hope we get enough time. Um, there'll never, honestly, to, in my opinion, I will never have enough time to be as ready as I want to be here. Um, never going to be that. Um, yeah, we did the egg count already. We ended up with six eggs today. And um, yes, the white hen did lay. Because that's how many hens I have. I have six. So if I say six, then you know she laid. So, but um, anyway, uh Again, just control what you can control. That's the key. Um, and when the time comes, don't panic. That is the time to act. That is not the time to react. There will be so many people out there, folks, that are going to be reacting. They're going to be running around not knowing what to do. They don't have a plan. They don't know what to, what to think. They don't know where to go. None of it. They have no clue. 
with being prepared and being ready to the best of your ability, it just puts you in an awesome situation that you go, okay, this is it. Now it's time. Now we have to do what we have to do. And, you know, um, it's very calming, to be honest with you. Uh, like I said, I there's so much that we want to get done and accomplish down here. And we're just going to slowly grind it out. I mean, that's all we can do. Um, I would love if, if somebody said, hey, here's 50 grand. Go at it. You would see a lot of stuff happening down here. <laughs> you know, if I had that kind of money. I wish I did, but I don't. I mean, like, I'm like everybody else. You know, so we do what we can. We try to get things as ready as we can be. And when the time comes, we'll do what we have to do. And, uh, you know, and that's that's just the way it's going to go. So anyway, um, oh, we are all in this together. We are one race called the human race. Uh, we are legion. I like to say we are legion. And everybody once in a while, you get somebody, oh, legion, that's bad. That's in the Bible. Uh, is the American Legion bad? Was a Roman Legion bad? So it's just Legion it means many. We are many. We're all over the country. We're all over the world. Where is everybody from tonight? So let's do that. We got Brad in Missouri, uh, the UP of Michigan with Dawn. Uh, we got Franklin County, Ohio, Melbourne, Australia with Philip in the house, Fayetteville, North Carolina with Carol, Steve O coming from Salt Lake City, Utah. Sandusky Bay, Ohio with T, Athens, Texas with Kathleen, Emil in BC, Canada, in Canada, uh, Clyde in Inverness, Florida, Oakey Forge in Nowhere, Oklahoma, Southeast Tennessee with Terry, Dallas, Texas with Beads and Beans. We got Belgium in the house with the Holler. I just stayed up late with us. Dave in Ontario, Canada, Waterloo, New York with Sharon, Vancouver, BC, Canada with Dusty, West Virginia with R Square, Cape Cod, Mass. We have Birdsboro, Pennsylvania with Melissa. Leesburg, Florida with Joan. Morning Light coming at us from West Virginia. Uh, Eddyville, Kentucky with Sherry. Toledo, Ohio with Jamie. Uh, from West Virginia currently in Ohio. 76, Gin Bay. Gina? Gina Bay, okay. Um, West Central, Ohio with Dale. Why are you saying stop, Juby Joe? What, what am I missing? Are you yelling at somebody? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Southwest Virginia with TNT. TNT. Uh, Missouri, New Ozarks with Delbert. Uh, Central New York with Village Homestead. Karen in Western New York. Dust Devil coming at us out of Texas. Critter Lover coming at us out of Virginia. Scott County, Virginia with Midway Farms. So, again, folks, we are truly um, all over the country. We're all over the world. We're a huge, huge network of people. We got Janet coming at us from BC, Canada, Northern California with Steve. It should be. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Did I miss something? Because <laughs> you keep going stop, stop. So I, I have no idea what you mean. Did I miss something? I have no idea. So anyway, but we are all over the country. We're all over the world. We are a huge network of people. If we ever come together, um, there would be no stopping us. No stopping us. We could do anything that we wanted to do. Um, if we ever got organized, then the government would be really scared. They would be really scared. So, you know, that's, uh, like I said, control what you can control. Do what you can do within your financial situation. Um, you know, and there's that old saying, you prepare for the worst. And you hope for the best. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a whole lot of faith in mankind. It's not a good situation. And uh, I don't like where things are going. We got Steve in Northern California. Kevin says, too many people asleep. I agree with that, Kevin. I agree with you with what you're saying. Yeah, I do agree. Well, Juby Joe, if you're not going to spit it out, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, <laughs> I have no idea. So, But like I said, again, take care of your business. Do what you can do. Um, you know, there, keep, there's a KISS method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Just focus on small things. And you would be surprised.
focus on a bunch of small things and get those small things squared away. The next thing you know, you're checking that off your list and you're on to the next thing. Um, and if you keep it simple, it's going to be better for you. Like you said, again, like one of our goals this year, right? And I talked about this in January, water catchment. So we are putting the steps in place. We got the tanks now, which was the biggest thing. Uh, we got the wrong tanks to start with, which, you know, that's been discussed many times. And we, you know, have dealt with that. Um, and then we got the right tanks. And uh, so, you know, the tanks are here. And like I said, that was the huge, the big first step. Now it comes down to getting them spray painted, getting the gutter system set up. Um, and start filling them up. And, you know, as soon as we start doing that, we're going to be, you know, it just, it's a, just another step to put us in a good situation. Happy to see you all tonight. Have a safe week and keep prepping. Love to all. Good night. Good night, Don. Have a good night. So have a good night. But anyway, you know, again, uh, we just do do the best you can do. And, uh, you know, like I said, when the time comes, we deal with it. And that's how it's going to have to be. So, anyway. Um, I want to thank my moderators who do an absolutely fantastic job keeping the chat clean. I uh, really appreciate what you do, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and it means a lot to me. And thank you very much. Um, you guys are awesome. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't even see half the stuff anymore because you guys get it so quickly that a lot of times I don't even see it. So um, that's that's cool. So I, I do appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate all you guys being here as well, supporting the channel. Um, it's a lot of fun. I do enjoy these chats. Um, am I opinionated? Absolutely. Yes, I am. OK. Do you have to agree with everything that I say? No, you do not. But could we still be friends? Absolutely, yes. You know why? Because I respect your right to think the way that you want to think. I do. Um, even if I don't agree with you, even if I disagree with you, I'm still going to respect you enough to be, okay, we can agree to disagree, and then we can go on to something else. So, but, um, you know, again, it's just do what you can do, work together, try to do the best you can. That's, that, that's the important thing. Um, Remember, guys, we truly are all in this together. We are one race called the human race. As soon as we could ever figure that one out, we truly will be in much, much better shape. We have to come together as human beings and stop letting them divide us. They use race. They use religion. They use political affiliation. These are all tools to keep us fighting amongst each other instead of coming together. Okay, And that's the key. If they can keep us divided and fighting against each other and they can squash these little rebellions uh, like the Canadian trucker thing, uh, you know, the yellow vestment over in France, uh, you know, Arab Springs, when they can, you know, you look at a situation in Iran um, and how they squash that one. They killed a whole bunch of people over in Iran when people said no more, didn't they? I mean, think about it. A lot of people went to jail and that's how they control things. If we could all come together and say no, it stops. And that's a fact. So also remember, folks, to hug and kiss the ones that you love. Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really important that we, we tell the people that we care about every single day how we feel. Last but not least, STD, step, thing, and day. One step at a time, one thing at a time in one day at a time. Whatever, you are, whatever you're trying to accomplish in life, it doesn't have to be about living off grid. It doesn't have to be about prepping. It is a realistic goal that you know you can meet, that you have set, and then you set about to making it happen. The only person that is going to stop you from reaching that goal is you. That's it. Nobody else. So if you stay positive and stay away from negative people, stay away from those people that tell you what you can't accomplish, you can accomplish anything. And that's the reality. And I, and you have so many people that are so negative and they just want everybody else to be miserable. Like they're miserable. Choose to be happy. That's what I choose to do. Um, I would rather bust chops, laugh, have fun. Um, I have my days. I'm like anybody else. I'm a human being. 
but I think overall I have a pretty positive attitude. I try to anyway. And, uh, you know, and like I say, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Um, and that's what we should all do. So anyway, guys, be safe. Keep prepping. Take care of your business. I will see you all later. Have a great night. Prepper Nurse One, out for now.